So it's time to do some tinkering with this little uh, display that I pulled out of this remote control in last week's video. Um, I've uh, off camera, I soldered some header pins onto it. I initially, I tried to use the ribbon cable, little sort of paper type ribbon cable that was on here, but the picture is just too narrow to get onto the header pins. So I replaced it with some bits of cat five wire and here we have this conveniently uh, hovering above the board. Got an Arduino Nano here, pilot jumper wires, page printed out from the data sheet that I found for this thing, um, showing the physical connections. I've got a similar one in here for reference. Um, another different, uh, this is the, the two, uh, 16 by two. This guy's 20 by four, so is this guy. Um, and this one has the, it's pins labeled and those pins match the pin out on here on these little I2C backpacks, which isn't labeled. So I've got that for reference and I think later on I'll try this, but first I'm going to try and hook this up just in, um, a four bit kind of parallel mode, uh, on the data sheet here, focus, um, the, so we got uh, ground, power, uh, n negative power supply for the LED or the low voltage, which is for whatever reason, just 0.7 above ground. Interesting. Um, we've got uh, the data or instruction. So that will be um, um, high if you're sending, you know, actual alphanumeric characters and low if you're sending uh, instructions like clear the screen, move the cursor to here, stuff like that. Um Got a read write selector and a an enable uh, starts the data read write, and then we got eight data bits, so you can send data to it in parallel. Actually, there's a couple of different modes that I found on the uh, on the data sheet, um, and on in my looking at libraries and stuff. You can either send all eight bits at once, or you can just send four bits, the high four high ones, but send them twice um, with I think a read, write or, uh, some other thing in there. I'm not sure. Um, fortunately the libraries take care of most of that, I think. Um, but regardless, you only have to wire up the top four, uh, data bits and then all these ones up here. So you don't have to wire up all 14 pins and the 14 pins is what this guy is. The rest of these ones use 16 pins which is among the reasons why I can't put that backpack straight on there. The other reason is of course that the pin, uh, spacing is different. So that's why I didn't just solder it directly on like this one is soldered on. I'm going to go with just direct pins on there, but initially I'm going to wire it up, um, just in parallel mode and I found a library. It's the standard liquid crystal library. It's the, the library that works with these guys that, um, I mean, one of these came in my, in my starter kit. Um, not that one, this one, uh, which is, which I've had set up for a long time, just as a temperature, uh, thing to play with. Currently it's got the I2C backpack on it. It came without it. So the first time I used it, I just used a generic LCD library and this parallel mode that I'm about to do on this one. And it worked first try, so hopefully that'll happen here too. I'm just going to speed through wiring it up. Basically, um, in the in the Liquid Crystal Library uh, examples, there is a a demo called Hello World. Duh, what a shocker! Uh, and it shows the uh, the pinout on the Arduino based on the sketch. So I'll just match that up with what I see in here and connect them up and I'll be back in a minute. Oh yeah. Um, I'm probably going to have a, a beer or two while I'm doing that. There's a sip or two of beer tonight. It is juice of the oats, oatmeal stout from Oxus brewing company in Winnipeg. It's one of the few, uh, breweries that I haven't visited yet. Dark ale with, uh, coffee and chocolate, uh, notes, creamy, smooth body, nice traditional oatmeal stout.
Okay, that's all hooked up. You notice I didn't use those four low bits uh, on there as I was discussing. So there is the connections. Um, that is 10 wires, which isn't that bad. Uh, this one, the third wire, is that one that says it's supposed to be uh, LCD minus, and it's supposed to be 0.7 volts above ground. So I'm thinking that I might just put a diode in series with that, just to, because uh, there'll be a 7 volt or 0.7 volt to drop across the diode. I'm not sure if that'll work or not. We'll try it here and see. So I've got the Hello World sketch loaded up on here already. You've seen sketches get loaded, so that's not a big hairy deal. Let's see what happens. It says Hello World, and it's counting. So this is just the standard Hello World sketch that comes with the library. And all it does is clear the screen, uh, put the cursor in the top left, print Hello World, go down, and print how many seconds the Arduino has been turned on. If I hit the reset button, it resets that. So that is what's happening there. And that is pretty freaking awesome. So that wasn't even all that difficult. Um, and a person could stop there if they wanted to. However, that's using two, three, four, five, six pins off the Arduino. Um, if we use the I2C backpack, where did it go? If we use the I2C backpack, however, it will only take two pins, uh, serial clock and serial data, leaving the rest of them um, no, uh, for other things. So let's uh, give that a try, shall we? That is ground. That is five volts. Uh, SCL is A5. And SDA is A4. Okay, so that's all it takes to hook up the, the backpack. Now I've just got to hook straight across all 14 pins, basically, right? And I probably shouldn't need those first four, but I'm going to hook them up anyway. Um, it'll use it or it won't. And this is just going to be exactly the same, only I'm going to use a whole bunch of shorter wires here. So I think I'll just skip ahead so you don't have to watch that again. <sighs> okay, there it is all wired up. Um, and apologies to the people who are not colorblind, for, but I decided to use all the same color wire just because just it doesn't really matter that much. They just go straight across. So, let's, uh, I guess we need a different sketch. We need an I2C based sketch now, uh, which is from a slightly different library. Actually, before we get started, the first thing to do is detect which IC, I2C port or I2C address the, uh, that backpack is running on. So we'll use this little sketch here, this I2C detector sketch. And it is telling us that our I2C board is on address 027. So now then, um, there's, I'm using a library called Liquid Crystal I2C, which, duh, what a surprise there, and the uh, wire library, which is what you need to run I2C. Backlight pin doesn't matter. I'm going to change that to 27, because that's what it is. And I don't know what the rest of this does. Uh, backlight doesn't matter because I don't actually have a backlight. Um, pin 13 isn't connected to anything, so it doesn't really matter. So upload that. Hmm. Okay. That's a problem. I'm going to go off and experiment for a minute here. Or two. Or three. I'll be back. Okay. I think I've got it now. Uh... I had to uh, mess around a little bit and uh, strip it back and find some other stuff online. Anyway, this one actually compiles. So let's send it and see what happens. Okay, there we go. Um, you see that? Yeah. 
So, there's a couple of things that I had to mess around with. The software and libraries was obviously one of them, and that doesn't come as any surprise because I am not all that comfortable in software world, as I'm sure you know if you've been watching. The other thing that I had to do was, um, so on this, on, on the, uh, this unit, it seems that, uh, it needs the LCD driven differently than this one. This one, it's power supply for the LCD on pin three needs to be held low and at 0.7 volts. And so previously I just wired that straight into the, uh, in through this diode here. Um, this time I've had to do the same thing, but all the rest of them are straight across. Just ignore that pin on here. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's for a, an LCD that needs a positive voltage there. I don't know. Um, what's on that pin? Uh, pin three. Ah, don't short them. It's being held at exactly half of VCC at two and a half volts. So obviously that's not going to work if this thing wants a low voltage. Something to keep in mind. And that took a fair bit of dicking around with once I got the code to even compile and upload. So here we are. And I couldn't be happier, I must say. Now I can uh, put whatever I want on there, uh, 20 wide by four high. And I'm wondering if it's the same thing on this one, because I remember when I got this one, I just tried to play with it quickly and I couldn't get it to work. I did find that its backpack has a slightly different uh, ITC address, even though it is the same board. I mean, it's, let's flip it around here. It's the same board. Um, even the address jumpers are all still open, so I'm not sure. Oh, the chip looks a little bit different. This one's a Phillips chip. That one's something else. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Anyway, regardless, um, something to keep an eye out for. And actually, yeah, maybe I will. Oh, no, I have no way of, of pulling that to ground on here. Well, I guess I could pull it to ground through a resistor or something. Yeah, maybe I will try it. Hang on, I'll just uh, change things up. I'll have to change this, the code a little bit to, to talk to this one. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got this guy connected up and it's just connected to the backpack right now. I've uploaded the same code only with the uh, ITC address changed to 3F. So, well, let's plug it in and see what happens. Oh! I actually didn't expect that to work because previously when I was messing with this one, it didn't work. Okay. So I guess it's backpack is the correct one for this. And it came with the backpack on it. I'm pretty sure. So, um, yeah, now I have two working LCD displays. <gasps> oh, so I've rewritten the code a little bit just to add in a second LCD definition and put both of the I2C addresses in. And since I2C uses the same two wires to connect to multiple devices on the bus, just with different addresses, I connected the other, both LCDs up. So as you can see, um, this one is still running. This one's not showing anything right now except for some blank pixels. But I upload the sketch. Let's see. Will it work? That one got cleared. They work. So I, I made this one a little bit different. I pushed the Hello World over a little bit just so that it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, it would look different. And you could see that they were different sketches or different uh, texts. But. <laughs> And they're both running off that same pair of pins right there. That is slick. Now I could probably do this with a bunch more. I could probably do that with this as well. But in the code, like I said, it's not that much more difficult. I basically just copied everything over again. Um, 03F, that is the 
kind of am the larger one and two seven is the new one that i s grabbed out of that uh, remote i'm not sure why there's two lcd knits they were in the example sketch that i uh, copied so i just left them there backlight shouldn't matter um although the kind of orangey one the larger one is using the backlight so that's fine um and then begin a 20 by 4 lcd if i was using the smaller one i could make that a 16 by 2 um and then lcd number one and the same thing again and then down here lcd set cursor zero zero hello world zero two the time um, lcd one do exactly the same thing only space it over a little bit that's fairly slick and i'm actually i'm pleased that was so relatively easy to do um and that i got a free lcd that i can use that's also pretty cool um i'm gonna have to go scouring through the scrap at work um a couple of things somebody on the original video commented that maybe this is a polarized screen and maybe this is a polarizer i tried it it isn't uh, it's just clear nothing magic going on there somebody commented that i should try doing an rs232 loop back on this and see what happens if i push some buttons good idea unfortunately i've already cut this apart if i find another one the scrap at work well i'll bring it down here and uh, give it a shot just to see what happens well that was that was a lot of fun um and you can't be angry at uh, salvaged parts that work thanks for watching everybody i do appreciate it um not sure what i'm gonna do next actually no i do know what i'm gonna do next week i've got uh got something that a that a buddy another youtuber sent me so i think i'm gonna play with that next week but uh for this week that's it uh comments questions down below as usual thanks again talk to you later